Hi. Okay, so this week is all about how climate and physical factors affect the type of ecosystem that an environment can support. Now, your textbook covers some of Earth's major terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. And in that spirit, I wanted to give you my list of the top five most overlooked ecosystems out there. Number one, whale falls. When a whale dies, it falls to the bottom of the ocean, and this community of bacteria and tube worms that feed on the dead whale carcass starts to develop. Now, before long, other organisms start to descend on the whale fall, including clams, starfish, sea cucumbers, crustaceans, hagfish, and even small sharks. Scientists have actually found a number of new species on whale falls that have never been found anywhere else. And incredibly, in the deepest parts of the ocean, these ecosystems can persist for as much as 10 years. Okay, two, rocks. Rocks can have ecosystems on them, and the primary producer in this scenario is often lichens. Now, lichens have a strange biology. They're not actually plants, they're the result of a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungus. The algae actually lives inside the fungus and provides the fungus with photosynthetic energy. Now, in addition to living on rocks, trees, and dirt, lichens are also common in the Arctic, where they're a major source of food for animals in the winter when nothing else can grow. Lichens are incredibly slow growing. It can take hundreds of years for a lichen to grow to be just the size of a quarter. Also, because of their unique biology, lichens can't shed the toxins that they absorb from the air. So researchers are now using them as a record of air pollution going back hundreds of years in the past. Number three, geysers. Now geysers are caused when geothermal energy heats up water under pressure, sometimes causing it to shoot out of the earth. Now the heat, of course, affects the surrounding ecosystem composition. But geysers and hydrothermal vents can also be very brightly colored. And the reason is, there's life going on in the water as well. These waters are rich in thermophilic bacteria and algae. Some of them prefer water between 50 and 70 degrees, and other types actually grow best at temperatures above 80 degrees Celsius, and can even survive in waters well over 100 degrees. Soon after people discovered these organisms, they realized that these thermophilic bacteria are tremendously valuable. Their enzymes are stable at very high temperatures, which means that they're incredibly useful for manufacturing. They allow us to perform all kinds of chemical reactions very efficiently at high temperatures to do things like make antibiotics and plastics. And in fact, the very first thermophilic bacteria discovered in Yellowstone National Park in 1969 led to the discovery of TAC polymerase. It's the enzyme that makes PCR and modern DNA synthesis possible. So these bacterial ecosystems are pretty important. Four, rocks, again. Because stuff just doesn't live on rocks, it also lives in them, like lithotrophic bacteria. These bacteria have been found living in rocks up to three kilometers below the Earth's surface, where they can survive incredible heat and pressure. Most are autotrophs. That means they generate their own energy from inorganic matter, usually by oxidizing sulfur or iron in the rocks. But there are also some species that have evolved to consume these sulfur oxidizing bacteria and live down there in the deep rock with them. Researchers have a special name for this ecosystem. They call it slime. Okay, number five is you, because you are full of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. They literally cover every surface of your skin and the insides of your digestive tract, which is kind of like your inner skin. It's been estimated that there are 10 times as many bacterial cells living on and inside you than there are human cells. That's enough bacteria to fill a half gallon jug. Now many of these species are so specialized that we can't even study them in the lab. They can't grow outside the human body. And scientists have only learned about them by sequencing the DNA that comes from all the stuff inside our bodies. And they found that the species in our guts are totally different than the species on our skin. And what's more, the species on different parts of your body are totally different. So it's like your hands and your face are entirely different bacterial island ecosystems, each with their own species. Even more incredibly, different people have different species on them. So in the future, forensic police might be able to identify what you've touched by the unique bacteria fingerprint you leave behind. Okay, that's it. Don't forget that discussion activity number three and quiz number four are both due on Sunday, June 2. Talk to you guys later.